the Bible to the cross from the cross. Every Bible story has three components. First, God's love. Second, God's compassion. Third, God's miracle. Opening your Bible opens miracles. The Bible as one story is holy enough in our lives. Day 122, Proverbs 25 to 29, Solomon's Metaphors. Proverbs explained the characteristics and end of the foolish and stressed that we should turn away from such behavior and be on our guard against them. First point. Solomon and Jesus both used metaphors to make their messages easy and relatable. Jesus used the countless metaphors to teach the people about the kingdom of God. Metaphors are an easy way to help people relate to the message or understand better. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed, which a man took and planted in his field. Though it is the smallest of all seeds, yet when it grows, it is the largest of garden plants, and becomes a tree so that the birds come and perch in its branches. He told them still another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed into about 60 pounds of flour until it walked all through the door. The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in a field. When a man found it, he hid it again, and then, in his joy, went and sold all he had and bought that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant looking for fine pearls. Solomon also used a lot of metaphors in his proverbs to unravel his wisdom. An example of his metaphor can be found in Proverbs 25 to 29. Second point, a wicked servant is lazy and a good servant is loyal. Solomon said that a royal servant is like a snow-cooled drink to his master at harvest time. Like a snow-cooled drink at harvest time is a trustworthy messenger to the one who sends him. He refreshes the spirit of his master. An example of a royal servant was Abram's servant Eliezer. Then he prayed, Lord, God of my master Abraham, make me successful today and show kindness to my master Abraham. Joseph was also a loyal servant to Potiphar after he was sold as a slave in Egypt. Joseph found favor in his eyes and became his attendant. Potiphar put him in charge of his household and he entrusted to his care everything he owned. Bezalel and Oholiab were also royal servants in the making of the tabernacle ordered by God. So Bezalel, Oholiab, and every skilled person to whom the Lord has given skill and ability to know how to carry out all the work of constructing the sanctuary are to do the work just as the Lord has commanded. Someone who cannot be left out is Moses, whom God called my servant. Third point, the foolish are stupid because they think they are wise. This is what Solomon said in regards to a foolish person. Like snow in summer or rain in harvest, honor is not fitting for a fool. Like a fluttering sparrow or a darting swallow, an undeserved curse does not come to rest. A whip for the horse, a bridle for the donkey, and a load for the backs of fools. Do not answer a fool according to his folly, 
or you yourself will be just like him. And so a fool according to his folly, or he will be wise in his own eyes. The most foolish person is one who does not believe in God and one who does not realize their own mistakes. Fourth point, one who helps the poor will not perish. Those who walk their land will have abundant food, but those who chase fantasies will have their fear of poverty. Those who give to the poor will lack nothing, but those who close their eyes to them receive many causes. Even the wise who worship God cannot live without material goods. However, this does not justify acting according to one's greed. A wise person is someone who is able to keep God's words. That person also does not accept bribery. That person does all they can to help someone with their strengths. Someone who God looks upon with a favorable eye is one who can use their skills to help others. Fifth point, a country succeeds with righteousness and perishes with the acceptance of bribery. Solomon thought that if a judge starts to accept bribes, then the country will fall down in ruins. That is why it is so important for the country to be built upon righteousness. If a king works hard for righteousness, then that country is bound to succeed. Oppositely, if a king works hard only for his own profit, then that country is bound to perish. A king should not ask for too much tax or tributes. Examples of kings who did this are numerous in the Bible, including the time of the prophet Micah. Both hands are skilled in doing evil. The ruler demands gifts. The judge accepts bribes. The powerful dictate what they desire. They all conspire together. This can also be seen during the time of Paul when Roman governor Felix asked for bribes. As Paul talked about righteousness, self-control, and the judgment to come, Felix was afraid and said, That's enough for now. You may leave. When I find it convenient, I will send it for you. At the same time, he was hoping that Paul would offer him a bribe. So he sent for him frequently and talked with him. This Tong Doc app is amazing. When I first met Dr. Zhou, we were speaking together at a conference. And when I saw the Tong Bible and the way he had placed this one story together, the Bible, one story, I ordered cases of this Bible. Now to see this app, the Tong Doc app, ready for you to use in your daily Bibles reading. This is amazing because so many people tell me I don't understand the Bible. And he has placed it in an order as so that it is one story. And then day after day takes you through the Bible in a way that God's Word will touch your heart so deeply that it changes your beliefs. It helps you to rise up and be the amazing person he created you to be. Welcome to the Tom Dog app.